Hi, this is Tegan's grandmother. What you're about to watch is a look into the life of hard work and maintenance. And we show things the way they really happen on farms, fishing boats, and hunting trips. So some of what you see may be a little graphic. So you better not say anything bad because I'll find you. I'm old and I've got nothing to lose. He's grandma's boy and I love him. Now, enjoy the show. Or else. Or else. <laughs> Maine's fisheries are a staple to who we are and what we represent. So much of our culture revolves around small fishing towns and the lifestyles that come with it. And when most think of Maine, they think of hardened, salty captains, their grit surpassed only by their work ethic. And fisheries are always expanding and contracting, depending on population of the catch and the regulations behind them. Recently, ground fish and shrimping have taken a bit of a hit, but on the rise are aquaculture, oysters, and mussels. And of course, this last record-setting year of over 130 million pounds of lobster. And contrary to popular opinion, we do not all live on the ocean. But for those of us who do, this is our way of life. There's a world full of adventure waiting for you, and we want to help you live it. At Kittery Trading Post, we've got all the gear you need and all the brands you love. With three huge levels to explore and over 200,000 products to choose from, this isn't just shopping, it's an experience. You'll find the quality name brands that you know and trust and the newest sports and technical gear to complement your lifestyle. Personal service from the experts will get you geared up and get you going. Since 1938, one store, one goal. Kittery Trading Post, the greatest gear for the great outdoors. Life Real Estate Company, we believe it's not just where you live, it's how you live. We believe that home is where we put down roots, where we let our hair down, where our journeys begin, and where we come back to after an adventure, where our families grow, where the heart is. You know, what I love about our company is that we're all committed to changing the way real estate is practiced. We want to empower our clients to make educated and informed decisions and navigate a clear, stress-free, exciting journey home. I love this car. It's the perfect car for me. It's got sunroof, auxiliary port, all wheel drive. I love this car. I absolutely adore it. When I was 18 and had no credit, nobody would finance me except for Five County Credit Union. So when it came time to get a new car, I knew Five County was the place to go. Plus they have personality. I love personality. Finding the perfect car for me was the hard part, but knowing where to finance it was easy for me. All right, so we start this episode right in my very own backyard, Harpswell, a place that yours truly actually hauls out of from time to time. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. I'm not just a main six or seven relying on this face to travel all over the state drinking and just talk, 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 talk talking in front of a camera, okay? I put my Grundons on one leg whole at a time and work as a real lobsterman. And not just to use as stories to impress girls, although it does help. This would probably be a good time to uh, introduce the old Captain My Captain right here. Lobster boat fishing extraordinaire, restaurant entrepreneur, one hell of a big old hunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mike Coda, this is brother Mark Coda, and this is the main dink. All right, all right, I gotta quit talking and go load up on bait before Mike has an aneurysm. Uh, today we're using pogies right on the iron, which is my favorite and just coincidentally happens to be the easiest way to bait traps too. But we also end up bagging herring and using redfish throughout the year. And the first thing that you need to know about fishing is that no matter what you do, the captain will always yell at you all day long while he just steers the boat and you do all the hard work in the back. Yeah, we had it out today. <laughs> See what I mean? But Mike does have a softer side too. Wink, wink. I swear to God, if you make me look fat. <laughs> I can't even suck it in. <laughs> Alright boys, this is how Maine Lobsterman make a belt. Here we go, take some rope, cut her up. Tie it around. <laughs> that simple. I had this boat for 10 years, going on 11. And I had a pointer for a year, and a skiff for a year, and then I did it before that, so it's been I don't know, 15 years? When you're up, at least? When you're hauling in the skiff, that's just like... Just a little outboard, a little boat. That's how you get your training wheels to be a big boy captain. Yeah. Which, is this, was this your first job, hauling? Working on the wharf. Yeah. I worked on the wharf. And then I started hauling. And then when you were working on the wharf, that was just helping people load in, like loading the lobsters. Yeah. Patch Same. crates. I know I could do as good doing this than I could yeah. going to school. Yeah. This is way better than going to school. 
going to school, spend all kinds of money. You can't even pay back student loans anymore. Yeah. It's not worth it. Not worth it to me. Well, a lot of times, too, when you get those student loans, you also don't have a job to, like, pay back the student loans. But you get, like, a loan for a boat or whatever. You're working every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, you pay you it make, your... You make the decision to either pay it back or not. Yeah. I mean, if you the harder you work, the more money you're going to make. As long as you're willing to put in the time, it doesn't matter. Do you think that it's more of, like, just because you were here, that's the job that was offered, and then you just wanted to... Oh, no, I like it. I like being on the water. Yeah. I like being on the water. I like catching lobster. It's nice there. You don't have to deal with anybody. Yeah. Nobody around to deal with. You're your own boss. Oops. What are you looking for, Mike? What are you set? I'm looking for women on boats, like the bows of them when they're in bikinis. <laughs> no, I'm looking for to line up the buoys. Sometimes guys are sideways and you can't you can't line them up. I mean, most of the time you judge it by what the time if it's coming in or going out. But sometimes it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. A lot of times. You could set a string out here and it would go east, and you could set a string out 50 yards that way and it would go west. It could, it's, it could be weird. First thing that you notice when you're lobstering, not only is it hard work, but it's like an assembly line, exactly. So yeah. everything that you're doing is it's up, bait, down, up, bait, down, up, bait, swing, up, over and over and over. But that's all it is. Like you. You bait it, and then you got no time, right? Because he's going to the next string right now. So you got to ban the lobsters, put the bait back on the bait rod so it's all set and ready for when that next string comes up on board. Grab the buoy, put the buoy through the hauler, haul the trap, bait the trap, set the string. And on and on and on it goes for 400 traps a day every single day. Sometimes you get lucky enough and you see some familiar faces and you get to catch up around the water cooler. In this case, that's the Atlantic Ocean. What are you doing? You are what are you doing? That used to be my old captain there. I knew when you, you said, it. hey, someone wants I knew it. 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 That's cool. I had another kid, you know. You did? Yeah. Is this one yours or this one the milkman's too? <laughs> love this car. It's the perfect car for me. It's got sunroof, auxiliary port, all-wheel drive. I love this car. I absolutely adore it. When I was 18 and had no credit, nobody would finance me except for Five County Credit Union. So when it came time to get a new car, I knew Five County was the place to go. Plus, they have personality. I love personality. Finding the perfect car for me was the hard part, but knowing where to finance it was easy for me. J. Edward Knight has been providing protection for the personal and business assets of Manor since 1898 and is still locally owned. With five offices in Bath, Booth Bay Harbor, Rockland, New Harbor, and Vinyl Haven, we are an insurance agent that is independent, local, and focused on you. When did you get your light first license to fish? Oh, when I was a kid, uh, probably 15, 14. And how many how many traps are you allowed to have? Like, was they it give a... you? I think they give you 250, but then they took the licensing away and put me on a waiting list and then it took me about four years to get my Captain my license. yeah my class three lobster license which is 800 traps now it's impossible if you you would have to work on a boat get so many hours and then you go on a waiting list and right now that waiting list would put you probably on a 10-year wait at least to get to minimal you gotta just wait for somebody to die off yep people that die are people that don't renew their license and it's like, and it's like, I don't know what the ratio is. It's a three to one, or four, or five to one. So for every three, four, or five, whatever it is, out is yeah. one in. The lock is gonna be. This is a measure, and the body is gonna be the length of this measure. At least that long, and it is. It goes further back, so it's a keeper. The other side of the measure. This is oversized lobster. If the body is bigger than that, then you can't keep it. So this is a good one. Aha! Rules. 
All right, this seems like a good place to take a quick break and talk about some of these regulations that Mike was just talking about. And there are, of course, many regulations, no matter what fishery you're talking about in Maine. So I headed up to Stonington to meet and talk with maybe the single most affluential person in this line of work. And now the executive director of Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries. Her name, Robin Alden. You're smarter than your average lobster. The point about regulation is that um, Nobody likes to be told no. We don't like it when we're two years old. We don't like it when we're 65 years old, you know, so, so, um, but the need for restraint has been true for I, probably as long as fishermen, I mean, human beings have been on well, two, yeah, I mean, two that, legs. That's... So um, the real issue for fishing is to figure out how can we use the smarts that fishermen have about how the ecology works, turn that into science so that we, it's objective knowledge, as much as possible and we can share it. And then, um, and then how can we use that to make smart regulations? And that doesn't mean they aren't gonna hurt, but it means they're not gonna have as many um, secondary effects that people didn't expect. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on up. Yeah, it's time to learn about lobsters, bub. So the first real big regulation was in 1872, banning the sale of any female lobsters with eggs. Seems to reason. I mean, you take away all the fertile women in a group and you're left with, well, have you read any books about ancient Greece? That's kind of like that. But with a huge depletion of population in the 30s, regulators made it illegal to keep anything under three and a quarter inches, a standard that lasts today, which allows the lobsters to grow into maturity and then reproduce. Then came the 70s, bringing us many things, including the invention of the blockbuster, as well as indie favorites, but it also ushered in the end of the wooden era and began the reign of wire. And in 1990, escape panels were installed to allow for lobsters to exit traps that got sunk for whatever reason and ended up at the bottom of the drain. Then right around 98, a regulation started for only allowing a maximum of 800 traps per boat opening up room for other fishermen to come in where previously there was no space to haul. And this was met with, well, let's just say, some hostility. And to Robin and many others, maybe the most important regulation is the owner-operator law, meaning that the captain must be present on the boat at all times when it's fishing, not allowing for huge companies from owning fleets of boats, which basically keeps all the fisheries that we have here small-scale, keeping Maine's coast looking like this. Well, not exactly this, because it's a whiteboard and a dry erase marker, but you know what I mean. Fisheries will always be changing. And that's something that I think there's been a sense in all communities, fishermen, regulators, scientists, that this current state of things is the way it is and the way it's always gonna be. It's not true. And um, I think climate change is making us recognize that. And by participating together and observing together, we'll have a healthier, more resilient ecosystem, which will make a healthier, resilient, um, financial system. All right, back to the boat. We got bugs to catch, and Mike gets all mad at me for cutting down his TV time. You know, for a lobsterman, he's a real diva. And speaking of those... Something that you don't see a lot on the old lobster boat. On some hair product. Mike, yeah, I gotta look pretty. No. There's one that happened. One that happened. One that happened. So this is it for you then, right? Yeah. And you go, how long do you go? All year. All year. You're always... You always I'll have sl I slack things. off mid-February, toward the end of February. March, April, slow, then take them out, set them back. Every day is different. I hear too. You don't know. What, you never know what you're gonna catch. Yeah. It always goes up and down. It's repetitive, but the catch always changes. So you yeah. never know what's gonna happen. It's, that's kind of nice. You can yeah. always do better. Always. You can always do better here. You can always grind harder. Be better at it here. Yeah. The harder you work, the more you learn. You'll always get better. All right, look, boats aren't just for work. Sometimes you gotta get to the wharf bright and early and start drinking straight away. Have a casual pint of cider at 7.30 in the morning. Switch boats, head out to the open ocean, then drink some more just to make sure you've really primed the pump. We head down to Portland for the lobster boat races and meet up with the rest of the crew, fly our flag, and show off the biggest little boat around, the Indian Outlaw. So the boat races are an annual tradition that go all down the coast of Maine. People tie up together, enjoy the weather, watch the races. I think, I don't know, usually at this point I'm pretty sideways. It's also just much more fun to be on one of the boats than just watching. So let's kick the tires and light the fires, baby.
you feel that back line, you're just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's uh, that big going yeah. that fast, man. It's fun. And what's the summer party? That's a barbecue, baby! No ring flyers. This is how we barbecue on Lost Boat at the boat races, bud. Five, five eights. Yeah. Is this a keeper? <laughs> no, that's not a keeper. You gotta put her back down, dude. This is what it's all. This is what it's all about. We're out here. We're partying. Craig, how was your sausage? It was delicious. We're just having a good time. You can play as much as you want, but you have to go to work the next yeah. day. Yeah. So I don't play anymore because it hurts. Yeah. I love this car. It's the perfect car for me. It's got sunroof, auxiliary port, all-wheel drive. I love this car. I absolutely adore it. When I was 18 and had no credit, nobody would finance me except for Five County Credit Union. So when it came time to get a new car, I knew Five County was the place to go. Plus, they have personality. I love personality. Finding the perfect car for me was the hard part, but knowing where to finance it was easy for me. At Main Life Real Estate Company, we believe it's not just where you live, it's how you live. We believe that home is where we put down roots, where we let our hair down, where our journeys begin, and where we come back to after an adventure, where our families grow, where the heart is. You know what I love about our company is that we're all committed to changing the way real estate is practiced. We want to empower our clients to make educated and informed decisions and navigate a clear, stress-free, exciting journey home. Okay, slept off that hangover, put some clothes back on for you guys, and headed up to Five Islands out of Georgetown to go out and learn a little bit about oyster farming and the small-scale aquaculture operations. And unlike lobstering, this is not an owner-operator system, but there have been huge successes for small businesses and families here in Maine to start up with these farms, like Tom and Tommy here, father and son, who over the past few years have built this from the ground up or water up, whatever, you know what I mean, uh, to secure their future and doing something that they love. Just getting on the computer and diddling around and I happened to find a, uh, a site for aquaculture. I had no idea what it was, didn't know anything about it. So I said, well, what the hell? I started looking into it. So we bought a thousand oysters, had three cages. Yeah. We started from there and uh, that went well for the first year, so we figured that. We'll get another thousand next year. So uh, we started selling to, uh, or actually giving away most of them to uh, locals around here. And eating them. And eating them, yeah. <laughs> and uh, found out that the oysters are very good. We've got about 175,000 out there right now. Nothing against them. Oysters just have never really been my get down at all. And the only thing that I really know about them is that yuppies, and hipsters worldwide have made it their single most important quest for whatever reason to make this snot mollusk into the holy grail of seafood. But what I've learned since, like any farming or fishing, there's always something that needs fiction. We're gonna take the, the, pon the, the cage yeah. and we gotta lift it up onto the boat and we gotta unscrew the pontoon to let it, the water out. And then we're gonna put Vaseline around the, uh, the cap to help seal it. Okay. <laughs> take a big glob, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> There we go. Look, I don't know why it looks like I'm so good at this, okay? It's just a, it's just a coincidence, guys. I, I've never done this before in my life. <laughs> okay. Look at that, she floats. Nice. Well, that's it, so we go home now, right? That's all we have to do? That's it? Oh, Oh, I thought oyster was easy. No, 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 no. We put them pontoon side down during the winter. So just the cages lift it up. So you sink yep, them down. You sink them, take off the caps. Up the pontoons with the water, sink them down. That way they're protected from the ice. Okay. So then you only do that once, really, to bring them from the bottom to the top, and then once they come up, they're up for cap the season? Cap it, let the, air, let the water out, yeah. cap it, and then uh, 
And then they're floating just like and this. Are you now we cruise over to the nursery float, and this is where the juvenile oysters grow out. And, unlike modern day helicopter parenting, you leave these babies alone for weeks in between cleaning. Let them figure it out for themselves. Look, you're not gonna be around forever to clean up their mess. It's high time, kids these days, take some responsibility, and by kids, I mean oysters. Uh, right now, Georgetown is known for five islands and for the lobsters that come out of it. We wanna put it on the map as, as also uh, oysters too. Come on down and, and see our oysters. Sorting. So a few times throughout their life cycle, the oysters need to change bags to larger gauges so they can grow and grow and grow and become really big, strong oysters. And, uh, typically, bigger farms have uh, mechanical sorters. It's, but, uh, oh, we don't do that here, okay? We don't have that luxury. Man, all right, we do it by hand. We don't have that luxury yet, but next year we will. Oh, wait. It's part of growing. I will be then then too. No, 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 no. <laughs> no it's going to be a manly yeah. sorter. Yeah, that's right. Seeing what the oysters will do is unbelievable. A full-grown oyster between an inch and a half and, and two and a half, three inches long, it'll, it'll filter out 50 gallons of water a day. One oyster. Yeah. And it actually cleans the harbors. So the more oysters that we have out there in the cove, really it's actually a, will clean the oysters. Just uh, a clean. massive filtration system. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's male and female, they actually change sexes throughout their life. Um, typically they start off as male. Um, and then uh, it takes a little while for them to get to female, but eventually they do uh, switch sexes and you need, um, you know, a male and a female to reproduce. So oysters actually have half the calories and more minerals and, uh, and vitamins than the chicken. Obviously. Now you're not just saying that because you have an oyster farm, are you? <laughs> that seems awfully convenient. No, 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 but, no, no. Uh... No, yeah, now are, it's the superfood everybody's got to have. Dude, they are a superfood. Yeah. The amount of zinc is yeah. just incredible in these things. And uh, and that helps, you know, healing, wound healing, things and, like that. They're good for your heart. And we haven't even talked about the aphrodisiac side of that. <laughs> right. right? Is that what they're known for? Oh, yeah. I was liking it. I was just sitting there, just, uh, just sorting out some things, sitting down, enjoying the scenic view, the nice weather. I forgot that I was working hard. You won't work in that eye. <laughs> Not hardly. No. no. <laughs> there is no brakes. Is it a union job? No, it's not union. <laughs> All right, now we head to some more mature oysters. No longer laughing at fart jokes. These oysters are much, much more sophisticated and refined, reading things like Kurt Vonnegut while discussing the pros and cons of cilia filtration systems. Is there a rope on this one? Okay, well, why and when why would there be really, you know? Are you sure you don't want to go into muscle farming? Because I think you'd make about a million bucks just on this one. Are you thinking that this is what you're going to be doing? Next year, um, I'm going to start doing scallop aquaculture as well. Yeah. So, so that's going to be part of the process of expanding, business, expanding business. Expanding. And uh, we're, this is it. This, this is, is it. The dream, right? this, is, this is the dream. And this is it for you too? This is what you're gonna be doing until? Yeah. I'm gonna retire with this. Yeah. I hope to be able to live to be as old as my father at 91. Yeah. Keep on doing it. Yeah. All right, now we got the system going. Yep. Little shake, little pour. Does he do this to you too? He throws all the oysters on your side so you gotta I'm sit so through. Oh yeah. yeah, I see his tactic. Yeah, I see his tactic here. <laughs> So I'm just gonna pretend I'm gonna make noises like I'm working. Like this. I don't know the difference, it's fine. Uh, man, that's tough. The shrimp industry is going down the tubes. The scallop industry is every other year or every two years. Uh, lobstermen, they rely on, on their resources for what they do. They take the short ones, they throw them back. The soft ones, they throw them back. The females, they throw them back. Uh, but it's all going to come to an end eventually. This is the way to go, the farming. I mean, I know what I've got here. Somebody calls me up and says they want 200 oysters. I can go right there and grab 200 oysters. It's sustainable. You know. It's exactly. sustainable. Yep. And it's going to be sustainable for us too. Okay. Finally, it's time to slurp down some fresh 
right off the boat, mucus textured bivalves. But uh, the flavor of the oysters comes from the environment. It basically, they say that you're tasting the water that is around it, it's environment. Right. And uh, so that's why when you go, you know, I don't know how many miles it is, but up to Damascata and the Damascata River, um, you know, you have a different tasting oyster. Him and I, we yeah. eat we eat out of here and we just have them straight out the shell. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like to, I love the taste of our oysters, so. But we're not professional oyster tasters, so don't ask us <laughs> about, uh, about the professional side yeah. of oyster tasting, because we don't know. <laughs> you just eat them. <laughs> we eat them and they're damn good. Yeah. Everybody else? I can say that that's the best oyster I've had all year. Really? That's the only oyster I've had all year, but it's definitely, <laughs> oh, the, best, here we it's go. definitely ah, the best ah, oyster ah, I've ah. had all year. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> all right, you got me. I like them. They're good. It actually kind of tastes like this all looks. Salty, complex, a little rough around the edges, and the satisfaction of hard work. I haven't run into an aquaculturist yet who hasn't spilled their guts to me. Yeah. Oh, you got to do it. There. What do you use? Well, I found that this is a little bit better, and you know, you don't have to clean the cages every other day. You can clean it once a week, and that kind of thing. Right. You know, and it's just all that knowledge that we get from all the experienced aquaculturists. That yeah. They just want it to grow, and get more farms like this, and it will. Someday I'm gonna be able to employ, you know, five or six or seven or maybe even 10 people someday. And I hope they get them all from Georgetown and hey, get back to the yeah. town. But it's a beautiful night. Nice way to end the day, huh? It's just better. It's and you ever, did you ever do like a- Funner. Mm -hmm. More fun. Funner. <laughs> I guess if you're watching, we're in a harp soul, man. Yeah, we're in a harp soul. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean, also known as the largest toilet bowl. <laughs>